The cold and brutal M of 23-year-old Bradley Lee William Thames was one that struck a nerve with a lot of people in the north of England, of course being Newcastle. Sadly, the M showed that friends could turn into enemies. Just before midnight on the 6th of December of 2023, police had received over a dozen phone calls of terrified witnesses saying that a young man had been left in a state on Cartmel Green in Slatterford. Police were dispatched to the scene and officers were left stunned when they saw a pool of red and then followed the trail that led into a block of flats. There they came face to face with 23-year-old Bradley Tams and he was in a bad, bad way. His face was ashen, pale and grey, cold sweats. His skin had been punctured and he was barely breathing. Emergency care was given at the crime scene and emergency staff battled to save the young man and keep him alive. But by this time his injuries were so severe that Bradley was pronounced dead at the scene. Now this was witnessed by witnesses, old and young. Now this was an M, plain and simple, and now all police needed to do was establish who was responsible for such a heinous crime, and it would be easy to find out. Police then set about acquiring CCTV from the night Bradley was caged. Video showed footage of Gavin Train along with his mum Andrea and friend Lewis Allison setting up on an outnumbered Bradley who was scared and tried to defuse the situation before becoming agitated himself. Bradley was also captured holding his side, fleeing from the scene following being bladed. What police discovered next was the fact that Bradley was caged was no accident. Gavin had set out to do serious harm or even commit an M because Gavin wanted quote unquote retribution for a previous incident involving his brother. In Gavin's head he felt as though Bradley Tams had disrespected the train family name. The court heard Bradley Tams had previously confiscated 29-year-old David Keith's mobile phone, who was the older brother of Gavin Train. In the altercation, Bradley Tams was allegedly armed with a Stanley and forced David to give up his phone after Bradley tore through David's clothes. A bank card was also taken. Now, in the aftermath, Gavin Train had told everyone that he could think of that he would put Bradley in an early grave. And the moment he sees Bradley, there was going to be a very real problem. In response, Bradley sent voice notes back, boasting that David had not defended himself. And also, Bradley was bragging about how easy it was to take the mobile phone and the bank card off a 29-year-old man. Bradley had even felt so confident that he was sending Gavin himself messages, promising to hurt his family. On both parts, the promises were said to be nothing more than immature chatter and bluster. However, the more Bradley seemed to open his mouth and gloat and boast about his crime, the angrier Gavin Train became. After all, he was his brother and his family's keeper, so the fact that Bradley Tams felt so safe, so confident, so reassured that there could never be any retribution, Gavin needed to do something drastic. Now Gavin was messaged by his sister Natalie Train on the night of the M to say that Bradley was getting a taxi to Slatterford. Immediately Gavin texts his mum Andrea to tell her to go to Slatterford and keep Bradley Tams there until I arrive because I will put him in an early grave. Andrea responded by saying that she understood. So on the 6th of December Bradley Tams had taken a taxi from Kingston Park to the home of a mutual friend Lewis Addison and Gavin Train's sister, they left in the same taxi after going to McDonald's. Now Gavin's sister knew Gavin had been looking for Bradley since at least the 2nd of December and both Lewis and Natalie knew Gavin's intention. Now on the way to Lewis's home, a Persia 206 driven by Andrew Train had pulled up behind the taxi. When the taxi stopped, occupants of the Persia 206 had ran to the taxi and pulled Bradley from it. The men had covered their faces. Gavin, Andrea and Lewis had all set up on Bradley. Bradley has said to the fact that there is nothing going to save you now. Lewis was said to have shouted at Bradley but did not lay a hand on him. Now a resident in a nearby flat who was watching TV heard a woman that sounded like Andrea. 
shouting, just do him in, and mentioning a straightener. The witness also says that the woman sounded angry and as though she was frothing from the mouth, repeating again and again and again, just do him in, just do him in, just do him in. Bradley was outnumbered and petrified, pacing back and forth. At one point, he did shout at Andrea. During the incident, Bradley managed to leave the scene, but then he returned. Now Bradley launched the hook at Gavin and then Gavin responded by blading Bradley times in the chest. Bradley then ran and that's how he ended up on the first floor of a block of flats. Police who were called by witnesses found a large pool of red outside the communal entrance to the flats and they followed that trail to the first floor where Bradley was found slumped on the ground, covered in red and again sadly he was pronounced dead at the scene. Gavin Train, who is from Rough Hay Place in Newcastle, he was arrested within roughly six hours of the end being committed. When told to turn round and placed in handcuffs, Gavin explained that he had made one silly mistake and now it had ruined his life. Andrew Train was also arrested. Lewis Allison was also arrested. While Lewis explained that he called Bradley Tams a friend, he also says that he had no idea that Gavin had been carrying a blade or the fact that the evening would end with an M. Lewis apologised to Bradley's friends and family for the incident. Andrew Train, despite being recorded by phone, shouting and screaming for her son to do him in, do him in, do him in. She says that she had no idea also that Gavin had the blade, despite Andrea also telling Bradley Times' family members they better help police find Bradley before Gavin does. Now Andrea also says that she was now haunted by what transpired and the events of that night. She also says that there were no words that can provide Bradley Times' parents and family with a shred of comfort with them having to cope with the irreplaceable loss of Bradley. Gavin Train was jailed for life for the M. The judge told Gavin part of the sentence was due to caring a man in front of children who recorded the incident and also who hid the blade. The minimum term was set out at 21 years. Gavin's defence was that he did not go there with the intention to Kay. However, he brought a blade for self-defence because he knew that it was likely Bradley Tams would carry a blade because that's what he did. After all, a blade had been used on his brother. As for Andrea Train, she was jailed for three years and four months for V disorder. Lewis Allison was jailed for three years and ten months for disorder. Again, Lewis Allison and Gavin Train and Bradley Tams had all known each other for years, grew up together. They had been around each other's houses played football, attended the same parties, played video games, drank at the pub, had the same group of friends and were considered really close friends at a time. And the end result was a man losing his life. Does the crime match the sentence? Let me know in the comments. Stay safe. Safe.